So this is a lecture about uh, about one school for all, the plan um, for the module one school for all in part of the uh, Nordic Citizenship Education Program at the University College Estoril. My name is Andrew Thomas. I'm your teacher for this module, and as you can tell, I'm really excited. Um, and ideally, I'd like you to see this before Monday, the 21st of August. But no problem, we can use it for revision as well. So um, the idea of this is to just um, go right through the whole semester and get, give you a broad brush idea about what we're going to talk about, what the, uh, the general ideas are, um, and, um, and what the theme is, because it's a bit of pretty vague topic, um, and I need to let you know uh, what I mean when I say one school for all, and what we're going to be talking about. First of all, we're going to talk about inclusivism, and, and, and we're going to talk about this real, real quick um, at the beginning. Um, so the first lecture is going to be about inclusion, because inclusion in Norwegian school is, is put down in law. Um, it's a really important principle. Um, it's also a really important moral principle. Um, we're not so interested in ethics um, in this course. Um, we're interested in what, what kind of um, consequences it has for society and schools. So as you can see here, um, inclusion always... In, um, implies people management. What are you going to do with people once you've included them? Anyone can, in principle, get on a plane. But if you get on the plane, then you're going to have to take part in the game of um, going through security. And a lot of you are very clear, um, are familiar with this by now, having come all the way to Norway. And um, and, and, and I don't really mind all this um, in, invasion of my privacy when I'm getting on the plane, because I kind of like the principle of it. I think I want to be safe when I'm in the, in the plane, but obviously there are levels, and nobody wants people to be um, searched um, searched all the way through just in order to go for a walk in the park. So inclusivism always, um, inclusion has some conditions, and it's going to depend what kind of good things you're giving out in your inclusion as to what people are going to have to put up with um, as the conditions of their inclusion. So we're going to talk a little bit about people management, because at the end of the day, schools start managing people about the same time as um, in European history. Uh, it developed in, in tandem with, for example, prisons and nurseries and hospitals and all of that kind of thing. So how does the people management happen? Um, how is the ordinary school um, organised? And the Norwegian schools um, mark themselves out by um, by having very few exceptions. They try to lump everybody into the same school, so everybody's in the same classroom. Different levels, different levels of function. Um, and um, but there are exceptions, and we're going to look at the exceptions and and, and the way the legal um, system handles these exceptions. We're going to look about about them, um, talk about them, especially in um, comparison with um, uh, political exceptions, um, particularly the the legal um, political exceptions, and that means talking about the state of exception or state of emergency. Um, most recently, we've seen the state of emergency um, put in place by um, um, by American law in um, Charlottesville because of the riots there. Um, state of emergency, though, seems to happen in pretty much every country. And France has been also um, has has been in the news because of its state of emergency recently. Um, essentially, the idea is that as soon as there is an emergency, as soon as there is an exceptional situation, then exceptional um, measures have to be allowed to um, react to this. And usually that means exceptional police um, force. So police, uh, the police are allowed to do things on an everyday basis that they're not usually allowed to. Um, um, and, and that's, I guess, why it's so surprising that the police weren't more there in, in Charlottesville. So, um, so essentially, the, the idea is you have to, um, in order to um, release, trigger these special powers, you need to establish that there is an emergency going on. The same is true as pedagogy. In order to have a special powers or in order to cancel out certain other rules and regulations, you've got to establish that there is an exceptional cir um, circumstances. This is done by a case of um, diagnosis, medical or pedagogical diagnosis. As an entire field of um, study devoted to this, um, which we teach at our, at our faculty and which presumably you also have in your home faculties. Now, Agamben says, Agamben, Giorgio Agamben talks a lot about the state of exception in terms of political theory. And he says that the ability to decide on the exception, what is an exception, what is an emergency, so that you can have these exceptional powers, that is what defines um, total power, totalitarian power is, is then in the background. Um, so, so we're going to look at those theories um, together, political and pedagogical theories of the exception. Um, now, of course, the the exception is decided in our case, in the pedagogical case, like I say, by a diagnosis, and that means having knowledge about children. Um, now, knowledge about children is um, is is devised um, and and 
organized by lots of different um, subjects. So I'm not going to be talking about one subject in particular. As you can see, there's lots of them coming up here. The point here is not that one particular kind of knowledge is dangerous, but that um, to, to look at the way knowledge triggers special powers, special political powers and special legal powers. Um, but when you get back to the ordinary um, situation of teaching and ordinary school systems, ordinary classes, um, knowledge also structures um, pupils' relationships to themselves and, and what they can, can and cannot do. And so we're going to talk about the screening that this defines the um, exception, but we're also going to talk about um, ways of um, generating knowledge about children, data about children, um, which they can then use in their own um, in their own organization of their own education. And this is a typical kind of, again, there's a political analogy um, of a kind of laissez-faire organization of people management where um, you, you, you set out some, um, some frameworks and people just live in those frameworks and organize their own lives and take care of themselves within those frameworks. Um, and, and we're going to look at the political and his, histor history, um, political history behind that uh, and look at whether it works, how it works and, um, and the, model, uh, the modern ways of looking after ourselves. Um, there are criticisms of this um, way of doing things, historic, um, politically, but also pedagogically, um, because taking care of yourself according to these frameworks is not necessarily freedom. There's not very much invasion involved. It's not very invasive. You're just saying, okay, here's what you can do. Go and do it. Um, so when pupils um, look after themselves in terms of assessing themselves and assess their own um, their own progression in in, in scales, that well the teacher's not very involved in there. It's not very invasive, but at the same time, that the scale is set, so pupils have to go in one direction. They can't diverge from those directions. They can go forward and backwards in in the, in the scale, but they can't go off from that scale. So um, so there are. So there are criticisms of this way of organizing people, this way of, um, of assessing people, because it, it basically forms particular kinds of brains, because our brains are, we can affect our brains, whether that be by discipline or by drugs. Um, brains, are, brains are plastic. Um, and, um, and if we are only going in particular ways, then we are perhaps suppressing some forms of artistic um, or unusual creativity. So that's, that's where we're going to end up. So here are the sources. Um, this may not um, this may surprise you because it's not necessarily the same as what's in the in on the internet. But we're going to try and get them all um, put together uh, so that they so they fit. Uh, it is important that you show your sources in your um, at the end of your your essays. So I'll try to do the same with my with my lectures, and I will also try and get the right reading list put up on the internet as soon as I possibly can. Look forward to meeting you all. Uh, continue watching this channel here, and um, and I look forward to um, and this will be the hopefully the way we'll be working in the future.